Yo, what's up? JC, Ron Strong. Beach and Spalding, Humble Park, Jacksonville Correctional Center. What does this all have in common? Well, it's a part of my story that I am going to be telling today. A part of my many, many, many life lessons that I've learned throughout the time that I did time and the people that came into my life. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces Federale got my car full of brick cases Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces Got out, should've seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to give back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision From wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong from wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong Hey, what's up guys? JC with Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, tell me what you think. If you are part of my wrong strong family, Suban to la Suburban, we're about to put some gas on the Suburban, go to the north side, take a drive. You know how it goes, man. Hey guys, what's up? JC with Wrong and Strong. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back to my channel. You know what I'm saying? My shenanigans, my stories, my my lessons in life. Everything I shown with you guys, so thank you. Jacksonville Correctional Center, I did time there. It's my very first, first bid that I did for an awful use of a weapon. I was fresh, I was a kid. We were talking about mid 90s. Um, pretty much a fish, it was, it was my first time. Man, I had done a lot of overnights at the uh, 63rd in St. Louis, uh, little police station. But this is my first time actually in and to do some time. And, you know, it, it's crazy because there's this one dude that impacted my life crazy. Jacksonville is a, a minimum security correctional center. So the dorms are set up with bunk beds next to each other. So it's it's almost like a, like a school, I guess you could say. Um, this cat that, you know... Uh, impacted my life he's Lan king from beach and spalding if you guys are not familiar with beach and spalding beach and spalding is you know most would call headquarters for the land kings for more than 30 years the motherland generation after generation have grown up on this area of humble park and if you guys are not familiar with humble park you know um it, it's it's a little tricky. I, I got caught once over there. I really didn't even know how how it was. But on the west, if I am correct, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. On the west of Humble Park is where all the Land Kings are at, and on the east is various like disciples. You know, Wilos, maniacs, all kinds of disciples on that side. But like I said, today I'm gonna talk about somebody from Beach and Spalding. And I hope somebody that knows him sees this video and lets him know. I've been searching for him for a couple of years now. And uh, last I heard, he was very sick. He was at a retirement home on the north side. And I couldn't get no more info from there. But, you know, I know how much YouTube reaches out. And, and I, just, I just hope he gets to see this because I want him to know what he did for me as a kid. And, uh, you know... His name's Cadillac Joe. He's from Beach and Spalding. He's Land King. He's old school. He's Puerto Rican, short, stocky ass dude. Uh, 
heavy accent, you know, um, straight, straight. When I got there, there wasn't SDs when I got there. And I was young, a little stupid. I wanted to hang out with the big crowds. I wanted to be, you know, uh, on, in some, on some stupid uh, time shit. And I'll never forget, man, I got there and he his bunk was right next to mine. I got there, he asked me what I was, I told him. He, you know, he knew I was young, so he, he, he gave me a, a, some quick pointers here and there, you know, and, you know, uh, he told me where my people were at, and so, you know, I came back, he offered me a cup of coffee and soap, and after that, man, he just, he just was, he was there for me, man, and, you know, I, I, I gravitate towards towards people like that because I, I I look at them like father figures in my life, you know. And he he taught me a lot, you know. He taught me not to be on the yard with no bullshit. Yeah, you have to be out there because you have to, you know, put in your time and and do pay your dues because your people, you know, s you know, seek that from you. But he also taught me to not be wasting my time out there if I don't have to, you know. And he was always working out, so I would go out there and hit the yard, hit the weights with him. And, you know, uh, very humble man, man. Very humble man. A lot of love. A lot of love for the crown, man. A lot of love. He had, yes, he, he was all about Land King Nation. And, you know, um, he impacted my life so much, you know, that here I am 43 years later. And, you know, I've still been thinking about him because all he did was give me good advice. And sometimes in life, we forget people like this. We forget people like this because we're young and we think that we know everything. And we don't want to listen. We, we, we know everything, we've done everything, and, and we're like fucking little fish, 17 years old, when somebody that's already been down that road, you know, did everything you already tried to do and did more, tries to give you advice, you know, and I think this is why I've never forgotten him. I've always, you know, kept him in my prayers. I always thought about him. And it's crazy because one of the uh, brothers reached out to me and I asked him, I was like, yo, do you, you know, do you have contact or anybody on the north side? And he made a couple of calls and he's like, yo, you know, last time I heard he was sick, he was at a retirement home and he got me some info. You know, I got a little bit closer to him, but you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get him. You know, I, I tried on Facebook, never got a response. And when I called the retirement home, they never gave me nothing. But, you know, I hope if he is watching or if somebody that is watching, you know, that knows him, he knows that, yo, Cadillac, you impacted my life like you'll never believe, man, just by showing me love, just on GP because you didn't have to because I wasn't a land king, I was an SD, but you still showed me love, you still made sure I had everything. When I didn't have nothing to eat, you fed me. And thank you, I just wanna say thank you. I, I, I appreciate everything you did for me. And you know, much love, man, amor. We, we have teachers in life. We have good ones, we have bad ones. And sometimes we pay more attention to the bad ones because we're in, you know, the bullshit, doing bullshit and, and all that stuff. But if you take a moment to really think about who was really a mentor, a good friend, a whatever you want to call it, something positive in your life, don't forget that it's never too late to turn around and say thank you. Thank you for your good advice. Thank you for what you did to me. Thank you. And, and don't let your ego get in the way of it. Because sometimes there's people that try to help us, but because we're, cra we're caught up in our bullshit, whether it's addiction, greed, anything, and we think that they're our enemies, and then we, we lash out at them and not realizing that they're actually trying to help us. They're trying to help us get better, or they care about us. They don't want to see us do bad, and we lash out on them. I had a, a partner of a, of a gym that I was partners with, and this is when I got locked up again for my violation, and my PO called him, and he said, yeah, you know, he's been acting weird doing this and doing that. And I took that as like betrayal. 
I took that as like, you know, uh, he snitched on me, blah, blah, blah. But I come to realize now is that all that shit is that stupid street mentality I had stuck in my head for years that these people actually cared about me. They didn't want me to. They didn't want to make me see me make the same mistakes that I've made in the past. So they were worried about me. So they they would rather see me go back than me keep on being on some bullshit. You know what I mean? And and that's the thing is that we never see the big picture because we think we know it all. We think we know it all. We think we're smarter than everybody. We we think we're untouchable. We think we're tough. I'll tell you one thing right now. I ain't no tough i i'm not tough at all i am done trying to pretend to be tough my whole life i pretended to be somebody that i wasn't and i'm just lucky that i had great people in my life as mentors just like i had bad ones i had good ones kind of like joe was actually a really good mentor in my life that impacted my life that this is why 30 years later i still remember who he is did it take me a while to change? Yes, everything takes time, especially if you don't know how to. I didn't know how to change. I didn't know how to be different. I didn't know that there's certain things that you do in order to make changes. I didn't know this. I didn't know this because I was so trapped in my own mentality that I kept trying to do the same thing but expecting dif different results. And you know what they call that, right? They call that insanity. You can't try to do the same thing and think that you're going to be somebody else. No, you're going to end up the same way you did all the other times. And my biggest reason why I share my stories is to show you that. Because if I was able to do it, then there's a million JCs out there that could do it also. Because at the end of the day, all it takes is one good teacher to guide you the right way and then... You teach the other, the other teach the other. People don't realize like one person could actually change the world. One person. It seems like a big, like uh, a big shot, but no. One person could actually do it. It just takes that person to actually look back and pull back somebody from, from behind you. That's still in the hood, that's still doing time, that doesn't know how to stay out of trouble because he's... He doesn't know how, point blank. He doesn't know how. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A mentor is somebody you're going you're gonna to teach them why they don't want to go back. It's like when you teach somebody to train. You teach them what kind of muscles to work, when to work them, how to work them, what to eat, what not to eat, when to cheat. You teach them all these things so that way he could grow, get stronger, and become faster, right? Well, it's the same thing in life. Same thing. You actually have to get yourself a mentor in order to be able to learn. Always hang around with somebody that could teach you something, not get you into trouble. <laughs> as easy as that. You know, my name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Give somebody a hug. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, one life is all you need. Cadillac Joe, I hope you're out there. I hope you see this message, dog. And you'll never, never be forgotten, brother. Thank you for being who you are.